Hi, my name is Monika Baker and we are busy with the third session of the series called Captivating and um, from the book of John Stacy Outreach. And today we're going to talk about healing the wound. Now, um, Stacy starts in the book about sharing a story how the hummingbirds come to our hometown each year and how beautiful they are and how playful they are and that they are like little jewels, like green emeralds and red rubies and um, there are just so much energy in them squeezed into these little bodies and she talks about how one time one of the hummingbirds while flying around got stuck in the garage and um, how she called her son because previous time she, her son also helped some of the hummingbirds to get out he would get a stick and then get to lure the hummingbird onto the stick and then take the hummingbird out and then they would be free but that day that little hummingbird um, didn't really want to, to work together to go onto the stick and her son really tried his best to get her out of there but she really got stressed and anxious and agitated and she really struggled to get out and while flying around in the garage um, at one point she, she hit the window and she fell to the floor and Stacy's son went to her and, she, and he picked her up and he took her outside and he tried to revive her as she lay lifeless in his hands and um, after a few minutes she suddenly regained her strength and she started flying again and she flew away and what really struck Stacy was that the whole household came to just to drop just everything they did and they just came and they wanted to help this little hum hummingbird to, to be free and not be anxious or hurt or anything and that just reminds me of the scripture where, where the Lord says that aren't we much more worth than sparrows and how much more would he not do for us to get healed and how much more isn't it on his heart to heal us and help us to be free to be free and to live um, how we were meant to live. So um, it starts with an offer. Jesus gave us an offer. I don't know if you've ever read it. I'm going to read it to you today. It's in Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 3. Listen up. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And Jesus is talking about himself here now. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to the opening of the prisons to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to enclose those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And then also in Zechariah, the Lord their God will save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be like the jewels of a crown, lifted like a banner over the land. For our great is its goodness, and our great its beauty. Grain shall make the young men thrive, and new wine the young women. So there's this offer that Jesus came, besides the offer that he came to give his life for us. He gives us this offer of freedom, that he has been anointed to give us freedom. He has been given the authority to come and open our prisons and come and set us free. And he wants to give that offer for you and for me and for everybody else today. And even many centuries ago, even before he walked on this earth, he knew that we were going to need freedom. It started with Eve when, when she also wasn't, she was also in bondage when she was cast out of the Garden of Eden. She, um, I can imagine how alone she must have felt. And, how she might have longed also to, to talk with God and to walk with God and um, just 
also the responsibility she had in the garden that was taken away from her now and I learn how she must have felt. So the main reason why John and Stacey Outreach wrote this book was to let people know that there is healing for every feminine heart and for people to help find how to get healed and then also um, to let you know that it is restoration for your heart. But like the hummingbird, um, when the hummingbird was, was stuck in the garage and she tried to help herself out of there, she just got more anxious and more stressed and, um, and she didn't take the help from the stick that was offered to her. Sometimes we also become aware of how stuck we are or, or what hurt we have when we are enclosed somewhere or hemmed in or I almost want to say being captive somewhere. And um, the Word of God talks about in Hosea um, 2 verse 6 to 7. Therefore behold, I will hedge up your way with thorns and wall her in, so that she cannot find her paths. She will chase her lovers, but not overtake them. Yes, she, she will seek them, but not find them. Then she will say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then it was better than now. And then therefore, behold, I will allure her, will bring her into the wilderness, and speak comfort to her. It's really striking to me where the Lord says He takes her into the wilderness. Because it reminds me of a time in my life where the Lord also had to take me into the wilderness in order for me to come to, to a, a point where I, I realized that I really needed to put my trust in Him and then I needed to put my healing in His hands. In high school I was in a relationship which um, I got hurt a lot and um, I ended the relationship just before the end of my trick and then three months later I went to the United States. And I really knew I had to go because um, I also felt the Lord leading my path like that. And um, so I went to the United States, I went to a pair there, and um, I was really stripped of everything. I was stripped from my culture, I was stripped from my language, I was stripped from my family, and all the people around me who affirmed me who I was always. And I only, there was only Americans, I didn't even have South African friends for the first couple of months. It was really like the Lord took me into the wilderness. Um, where I needed to start learning his voice and listen to his voice. I would literally get up in the morning as, as quick as I could shower and just get on my knees next to my bed and just cling to him. It was as if I had nothing else. I felt like if I didn't have this time of the Lord in the morning, I would not make the day. So 18 months later, he came and did a lot of stuff in my heart. And when I came back to South Africa, I was really at a much better place than I was before I went. There's a lot of stuff that had happened. I had to, firstly I had to realize that I wanted to fix all of my stuff all of the time and I, I had to stop doing that and realize that my hurt was just so big that I had to give it over to him. So I had to invite him in because um, he always was waiting for me to, to, to heal me but he couldn't because he's a gentleman. He wouldn't just burst in, just go and fix, fix, fix. I had to invite him in. And then there were certain agreements that I made out of the hurt I had in my life to try and protect myself. I made certain agreements and those agreements um, actually took me more in bondage, which I didn't realize because I didn't, I didn't give over to the Lord. I didn't surrender to Him. So I had to renounce some agreements. And there was a lot, of, a lot of tears as I realized this truth, as he softly began to speak to me his truth. I'm his beloved, that I'm his cherished one. Um, even just examples where he started teaching his voice to me, just how he cared for me. At this random times, I would just tell him I really needed a hug right now. And then suddenly the cleaning lady that day would burst into the front door and she would, the first thing she would do is, like give me a hug 
And it was random things like that where I just felt his love for me and really started spe feeling special as I grabbed his truth for me over my life. I also found that I had to forgive certain people who have hurt me. And forgiveness, as you've heard a lot of times, probably also and me too, but it's just such a reality that that forgiveness isn't a feeling, it is a choice. I had to choose to forgive. Because if I kept on with that bitterness and that unforgiveness, it just it, it keeps me in bondage. If I kept on being angry at the people who rejected me, I still keep that rejection in my heart. I'm still bound to that rejection. Because why am I angry at them? Because I'm rejected. But because I now took his truth to say, but, but I'm set free and I'm accepted by him, that rejection is cancelled. So how can I still not forgive? And um, that just brought me to a place of freedom when I could forgive. A scripture that also talks about it is Colossians 3 verse 13. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so he also must do. I think I've also hurt a lot of people in my life. And it's a lot of times that people hurt other people because they are hurt. And so for me, getting forgiveness from the Lord that He will guide me for all the things that I did, how can I not forgive those who, who have hurt me? So forgiveness releases you from bitterness and unforgiveness. So let's not harbor that in our hearts to keep us in bondage. I want to come and read you um, a piece from Captivating that really touched my heart and really just take everything together beautifully for me. Ask Jesus to heal you. We turn from our self-redemptive strategies. We open the door of our hurting heart to Jesus. We renounce the agreements we made with the messages of our wounds. Renounce any vows we made. We forgive those who harmed us. And then, with an open heart, we simply ask Jesus to heal us. Melissa was a young girl who vowed I would be tough, hard like a rock. And she became so for many years. But that's not the end of her story. She came to a place where Jesus asked to heal her wounded heart. She gave him permission to come in. And this is what happened. God went back and got the shaking little girl that was hiding under the bed and convinced her to come out. He unclenched her little fists and took her hand and placed it in his and answered her question. He held her and told her it was okay for her not to be tough. He would protect her. She didn't have to be strong. He told her she wasn't a rock, but she was a child. And then as a child, and she was his child. He didn't condemn her for anything, but he instead understood her and loved her. He told her she was special, like no other, and that she had special gifts, like no other. She knew his voice and trusted him. She could hear the pleasure he had for her in his voice and felt his delight in her as he talked. He was so gentle and loving, she couldn't help but melt in his arms. And this is available. This is the offer of our Savior, to heal our broken hearts, to come to the young places within us and find us there, take us in his arms and bring us home. The time has come to let you, Jesus heal you. I don't know if, if once in your life ever you have asked Jesus what he thinks about you or even just how he sees you. I can remember one time in my life where, I've, um, where he taught me how he sees me. Um, I was at a, 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 a church camp and um, I was already in university and um, it was at night and we were worshipping and there was candles lit everywhere and as we danced and worshipped just before the Lord, um, 
I felt it, um, that the Lord told me that He wanted to show me something outside um, and that I needed to go to the window. So while walking to the window, I thought in my head, maybe He wants to show me the moon or maybe there's something special about the stars tonight. And um, there was a curtain hanging just in front of the window and as I went to the window and put the curtain behind me, I looked at the window and I wanted to look out but, but it was quite difficult. There was a glare from the inside and I was a bit frustrated because I couldn't see outside. I wanted to see the moon or the stars or I wanted to see what was outside but I couldn't see what was outside and I just asked the Lord, but Lord, what do you want to show me? Because I can't see outside. And, um, and he just said, look at her. And suddenly I came, became aware of my reflection in the glass. And I saw myself. And he said, look at her. And he said, isn't she beautiful? And in my heart, I felt at that moment that, wow, I'm special to him. And he thinks I'm beautiful. And that just stirred something in my heart. So I want to challenge you. Don't you want to ask the Lord what He thinks about you? Ask Jesus how He sees you. And He might do it in, in very different ways. But this is just my testimony to you. First question, to ask Jesus how He sees you. Or just what He thinks about you. Who you are in His eyes. The second question is, do you have a wound still in your heart that needs healing? And the third question, is there a place in your heart where you need to stop trying to fix yourself and where you have to give over to Jesus and allow Him to heal you? Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you today that you came to give me beautiful ashes and that you have given your oil of joy in my morning times. And that you have given me a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that was upon me. Thank you that I may be called the tree of righteousness right now. And that I am a planting of you, Lord. And I just praise you, Lord, that you may be glorified through my life. Thank you, Lord, that you are speaking good tidings to the poor in each girl's heart. And that you have sent Jesus to heal the brokenhearted. Thank you, Jesus, that you are giving liberty to the captives and that you are opening prison doors in girls' hearts where they are bound. I praise you, Lord, and may this be really fruitful. Amen. And then I want to I end the session with a challenge for you this week. Take Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 3. There's about 15 lines. And each day, just take two lines. Try and memorize it before you go out of the house. And just meditate on those two lines the whole day. Just to realize the truth, the offer that Jesus has came to give you.